Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and this will be a quick shorty video for you today. I hope you all had a wonderful whatever you celebrated with your family and friends. And I hope the various invisible magic people that bring gifts brought you some really cool fountain pen related presents this year. Let me know what you got in the comments below so I can say that I've already got something bigger and better or poo poo your gift as something unnecessary for a true fountain pen geek. That'll be fun. This has got to be the most exciting evening of the whole year, Christmas Eve, I must say. I can't believe it. I couldn't be more excited. I wish you were here now, you know. This waiting is like making me mental. And here, I'm going to show you what I got for Christmas. My fountain pen related geeky gift. And here it is. The Fountain Pen Nerd Geek 9000. My headlamp magnifier headgear. It does everything but correct an overbite. I love it. When I posted my review of this Moonman TI-500 Titanium, I said it looked like the section was non-removable. I tried with some moderate pressure to remove it, but it didn't budge. And since I paid over $60 US for it, I was reluctant to break it, especially before the review was complete. But a viewer, who shall remain nameless, but his initials are Big Hen 4, showed me a photo that I had overlooked on Sally's Easy Buy listing that showed the pen in pieces. So I went ahead and gave it the old college or vocational school try and got it apart. And I also got the piston out. So let's take a look at the parts of the pen right now. This is so low tech that I forgot to put my microphone on. So let's first take the cap off. And then the first time you try to unscrew this section, you kind of need to give it a little bit more pressure because there's some kind of um, adhesive on the inside of this section. So I put my gripper on it, my elastic band, and I gave it a good turn. Now it comes off a lot easier, of course. And when I unscrew the section, it has a bit of a grating feel to it there the section comes off and these threads were covered with some kind of a granular adhesive i used a, a soft brush like a toothbrush to get that uh, residue off of there and cleaned it out but it's an interesting construction here you can see that this part here is part of the milled cone piece the section is milled back like that and milled back to a tolerance that allows it to slide into the sleeve of the barrel itself. And so when you put it back together again, that titanium metal slides against the inner cap and it causes quite a bit of... I'll do it against my mic so you can hear it here. It causes quite a bit of friction. Another viewer actually milled this down a little bit more to make the tolerance a little bit looser. Since you won't be doing this that much, I don't think it matters that much. If you start getting some ink leakage out of there, I'd put some silicone grease on that. In fact, I think I'll do that anyway. A little bit of our trusty silicone grease out here and just put a drop on that leading edge of the titanium and run it around a few times. See if that makes a little bit of a difference. Yeah, a little bit. Anyway, the interesting thing here is that if you look at the inside of the section, you can see there's a brass uh, nut that's holding that section in, and that brass nut has two slots to it. And you'll need some kind of a special wrench for that. And you can see here's the wrench for the Moonman P136, Magon P136. And it has these little ears on it that go into those slots for that pen. Now, this doesn't work on this pen at all. It's designed for the P136. But there will be a tool, because that's how they put it together. There will be a tool to get that brass nut out of there, and then you'd be able to remove that nib. Some other viewers have said that this nib resembles a Parker Vector fountain pen, and I'm going to order a Parker Vector and see whether the nib is exactly the same. And maybe by then I'll have a tool to take this feed and nib out of here. But that's how you get the section off. 
Now, how do you get the piston off? Now, you open the, the piston up. I use this. This is the tool for the Wingsung 699 uh, piston filler and they're available on AliExpress and you'll see this. It's only a few dollars and it's for that pen and I found it works on a number of other pens as well. But it doesn't actually fit this nut that's inside there. There's the flat edge of that nut. But I can get it in there just so it grips those edges a little bit and I've been able to tease that piston around. It's not really gripping that nut. That's what she said. But it's gripping the edges of it. It's actually stuck on there pretty good now. And then you can pull the piston out. And there's the piston unit. Those discerning viewers among you will recognize that this is the same kind of piston that you find in the Majon P136. The only difference is this has those little slots for those little ears to go in. So you can remove this piston and you can see that they're pretty much identical units. The only difference is that the P136 has these slots in the brass housing and the TI500 has the flatted end nut right there. Now I've written to Sally and asked her if there was indeed a tool for this pen and she wrote back immediately and said no there, there wasn't but she'll keep an eye out for it for me and let me know if it becomes available at which point I will let you folks know as well. And there you have it. Thanks for watching and that's all Sally wrote. I made this.